Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Clinic Gym Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Josh Satterley, and today it is my pleasure to sit down and talk with Dr. Dan Leonard. Dan, how you doing? I'm doing great, Josh. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for being on. Now, Dan, um, I'm having you on because uh, you are, I think, officially my first client in the uh, Clinic Gym hybrid consulting business because I, I was looking back uh, through our first clients, and I believe you were the first one to actually make the first payment uh, if I look at the timestamp. So that means you're my number one client. Yeah, I can't believe uh, how much time has passed since we initially started that. It's been, uh, it's been an awesome ride the last couple months. Um, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, so we started back in about a year ago. So this is, we're recording this in uh, mid-January. We started early January last year. And uh, yeah, man, take us through. So, so for the listeners, what was your setup like then? And then what's your setup now? So they can get an idea of the physical space because that's certainly one of the big changes. I know there are multiple big changes, but that was one of them. Yeah, so um, I've been in private practice for about six and a half years now. Uh, for the vast majority of it, it was in kind of the traditional clinic setting where it was really segmented, multiple rooms. Um, we had somewhat smaller rehab space. And then in the last space that I was in for about four and a half years, we had actually a basement or what people call the dungeon uh, that was about six or 700 square feet, um, which, you know, I, I had always wanted to add some form of fitness or advanced rehab into the practice. Um, so we started kind of from scratch with a few patients that had some interest down in the basement. Uh, this was probably about two and a half years ago. Um, and I was looking for help, some type of process. And I think we connected at one point a few years ago about some things. And then when you came out with the process, I mean, it was something where I was, I've been thinking about it uh, for a while and wanted to jump on it. Nice. And so, what's, yeah, what's your current setup like? Yeah. From so the dungeon to the... What, yeah, the castle from the from the smelly dungeon to um, a, about that time, you know, my wife and I had talked about for a long time, kind of moving on to a different space, kind of opening up our dream facility. Uh, so finally, we decided about a year and a half ago that we were going to um, open up a new facility, uh, make the move, um, jump in big, a big jump in space. Uh, so as of July, we moved into uh, facility that we actually got to design that's about 5,000 square feet. Um, it's about 2,800, 2,900 gym and the rest is clinic space. Um, it was cool. We got to go through the whole process of designing the space, the whole build out process. Um, looking back, it felt like it took forever, but now <laughs> that we're a couple months into it, it feels like uh, just time is flying by. Yeah. And can you ever imagine going back to the, the way things were? <laughs> no. Not never. And neither, I don't think my, I think my patients would leave me if I ever went back. To something <laughs> like that. Uh, it's like being, uh, it's like being married and you become like a millionaire and then you go back to when you were broke and your wife's like, see ya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, this yeah, is way I, too nice to leave. You know, there's nothing wrong with practice we were in before. Um, it was your general traditional practice, but there was always kind of that missing void for me of, yeah. I was always into fitness and athletics and that was something that I missed. Um, and we were, you know, we were getting by with, with the setup that we had, but it still just wasn't, wasn't what we envisioned. And once we made the move, I mean, and we can talk as we go here, but there was just, there was so much more that happened to our practice than just adding a gym. I mean, it literally changed the dynamic of when people first walk into the door to yeah. you know, when they're thinking about referring their friends and family in. Yeah, well, talk about that because I know one of the big things is um, when we started last year, we had multiple conversations. You were kind of like at what, what do you think? Like 80% of your schedule, like consistently 85% full. And now you're damn near turning people away. Right. Yeah. So I was at what I thought was 80 to a hundred percent of my full capacity. What kind of, I felt comfortable with, um, you know, I'm a, uh, I'd say a good combination between like a rehab specialist and a Cairo. I typically would spend, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes with the patient, depending on what they needed. Right. Um, now in the current And, and just for people who don't know you, like your background is kind of the MPI, DNS, um, like those type of treatments that you can't rush DNS, right? Like you can't do it in two minutes. Correct. 
Yeah. So like I said, I would spend probably 15 to 30 minutes with a patient. Um, so I felt like I was at my capacity at the time. Um, you know, one of the biggest changes that, that occurred with adding the gym, and honestly, it was something that was not anticipated, was um, the ability to integrate um, some of the rehab and strength focused movements into the treatment plans, which allowed me to essentially take patients off of my plate earlier and allowed me then to see a more, more volume of patient because I had that trainer helping me out the whole time. So if we go back to your old setup, you essentially were at 80 to hundred percent. And then if we, if we remove the people that the trainer could work with, it probably would have dropped your schedule to what? 50 to 60% full. Yeah. But in that same time that even that with additional space in your schedule, you still filled that up and more, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. I mean, so it, it's not a apples to apples, right? It's, it's a apples to apple pie a la mode, I guess. Yeah. And it's, it's allowed me to really focus on like that acute care um, kind of triage type provider where, you know, patient comes in, I'm, I'm focused on getting them out of pain as fast as possible. Right. And then we are trying to transition them to what we call like our advanced rehab program as fast as possible, where they may not even see me. They're seeing one of our personal trainers to continue with the exercises and then transition into the fitness side. Nice. And, and how do you, for those listening going, man, I, I, this all sounds great. I just don't know if I can do it. How do you, how did you find the place where you can refer that person over to the trainer ver versus keeping them on your schedule? One more visit. You've done a great job of that. It appears. So. Yeah. I mean, one of the things was the buy-in from the client is a lot, a lot different when you're trying to not convince someone, but convince someone that they need to see you for, two to three more sessions of manipulation, soft tissue in your traditional care versus, you know, saying, all right, I'm going to have you see our trainer for the next four to six sessions of focused one-on-one, -on -one, you know, stretching, activation exercises, strength movements. They see that as more valuable than just coming in for, for the treatment. Cause they're at, you know, our, our kind of guideline is if they're under a three out of 10 on the pain scale, mm -hmm. you know, we have them stabilized they feel pretty good. They're either going to self discharge themselves because they feel good. Right. Or now we can, we show them that, all right, now you need to work on the strength side of this. And they're a lot more um, willing to continue with care versus just coming in and getting kind of the same old manual treatment. Yeah. And so you kind of delegated a lot of what would be clinical care over to this trainer, right? Correct. Now in your setup, <laughs> that ended up opening up, a buttload of doors, right? <laughs> like, yeah, because sure. that trainer is, um, how would I say it? You hired him for one aspect, which was training, but it turns out that dude can produce for you, right? Yeah, honestly, he's at the point right now to where he's almost like a provider in our office. Like our goal is to get him a certain amount of visits, just like I would an associate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's paid at a trainer level. So we're going to make more revenue for the clinic off of it. It right. allows me to see you did hire. consider hiring another associate, right? Correct. Yeah. And it just, it's tough to make that pencil in a single provider office. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. I think that a lot of people run into that. Like oh, I'm going to hire an associate. It's like, how are you going to pay that person? Well, they're going to do this and that. And it's like, yeah, you got to get that engine turning a little bit faster, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah. and how about how well, so, so you refer patient from clinic to advanced rehab now that's not the end, right? You want to refer them into that membership, which is what we kind of went over early on. And how's that going? Like converting people to actually gym clients where they're paying cash. There's no yeah. notes. There's no, you know, there's not all the load of, Hey, this is a patient, no insurance billing for it, but cash services in the gym. Uh, how's that going? It's going well. Um, you know, I'd be lying if I said that, you know, a hundred percent of people that come into advanced rehab transition into the gym side, but right. our percentage is growing as we, you know, become better at that process and system. But, you know, I would say that, you know, if we're converting right now, two to three out of 10 people that are in advanced rehab, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And at the and, same time, like when you say converting, is that more work that you're doing the, the, the getting them in, or is that work that uh, your trainer's doing? Yeah. Once, once I refer them over to the trainer for, the advanced rehab sessions, I'm pretty much hands off at that time. So he's taking them through, 
anywhere between four to six one-on-one -on -one 30 minute sessions, which are either cash sessions or, you know, if we're still on a treatment plan, maybe some are built through insurance uh, mm -hmm. in our state, we're able to do that. Uh, but at that point, like he decides, all right, you know, this person's a good candidate. I've kind of vetted them through this process. Um, he sits down with them one-on-one -on -one at some point and, and goes through kind of their goals and their why behind everything and says, all right, I think you'd be a great fit for our small group training. Let's get you set up. And, and you know, he has that conversation with most of them. And for the people that don't choose that, they're still leaving, you know, our, in my opinion, our facility in a better position now because we've taken it that step further and worked on, you know, strength and flexibility versus mm -hmm. just the acute care side. Right. And I know early on we went over some like sales, you know, in our program, we have a big portion of it is sales training, right? Like, because yep. that's one thing that a lot of offices don't um, necessarily have. So when we went through sales training and it's all about like identifying the person's needs and desires and their wants, right? Yep. When that does connect, when you do discover that, what, is, what has he been able to produce training wise from that conversation? Are you talking what's like the yeah, what's the best he's ever done? So he's he's stepped up to the plate a lot, but what's uh tell us about some of the 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 at bats yeah, so, that he's had. Yeah, so there was one recently where and and I know most people can relate to this. I mean, as much as much as Kairos don't like to admit it, like we hate selling. Um mm -hmm. and it's it's just sometimes a tough conversation to have with people. So it's nice to not even have to worry about that and you have someone do it for you. So I had a patient of mine who was like twenty seven years old you know, worked a decent job, didn't even really know that he was that interested in training and then referred him over to uh, Jordan, my, my trainer. And he did like two one-on-one -on -one sessions with him and then text me one night and said, Hey, I just sold um, this guy a 12 month membership at $4,200 up front. <laughs> and I was, you know, texting back and was like, wait, what are you sure? And he was like, yeah, you want to take like a month or something. Yeah. Um, awesome. you know, wanted to train with us for the next year. He's got some big goals. I think we can help him. And he wanted to pay up front cause I gave him a 5% discount paying up front. And then, you know, just in the back of my mind, I like, wow, I, I probably wouldn't have done that. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's funny because you and I have had the conversation. A lot of people, uh, have some guilt. A lot of Kairos have like guilt around sales and like, Oh, I don't want to push anything on him. But I think through the right sales process, it's not, Hey, you need to do this. And because I say you need to do it, it's what do you want to do? And then you just go, all right, we, we can help you do that. And here's how, and I'm sure that I would guess in that conversation Jordan had with that individual, it was, what do you want to do? And the guy identifies, I got some big goals. And if you can help me get there three times as fast, I'm willing to pay you for it. Yep. In fact, I'm willing to pay you up front because I want the, those goals are important to me. I want to commit. That's why, by the way, a lot of people will go, Oh yeah, I don't know about the sales training piece and this other thing it's not worth, I mean, you've run into this, right? Like you did a lot of marketing with no backend sales system, AKA the most expensive marketing ever, right? Cause people would come in and you just can't do anything with them. And now that you have Jordan selling and I'm doing air quotes for the selling portion, but having those goal sessions and success strategy sessions with clients, how much less marketing do you need to do to produce more business? Yeah. And I even think, you know, again, I'm going to kind of harp on like, the unanticipated side benefit of, of this whole process was the effect it had on our clinic. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, learning the sales process and learning uh, from you, you know, how to kind of tap into that more emotional uh, why behind why patients choose to, you know, pay for a program. I mean, we start from day one when, a, when someone comes in to our clinic now and we talk about that. All right, why are you here? What are your goals? What is this affecting in your life? And that follows them through throughout the entire process. So we've identified right up front, this is why, you know, they want to get out of pain, but more importantly, like they can't play with their kids. How can we get them to that point? And mm -hmm. now we have a solution versus just, you know, we see them six times and they're out the door and they probably have a reoccurrence three months from now. Right. It's been, it's been very nice. Is, is there anybody that goes through your, your clinic that never ever steps foot on rehab or, or gym? Um, you know, I've got some patients just like anyone else that honestly just want to come in and, you know, go through the clinic and never want to see it. That's fine. Uh, but for the vast majority of people, they are doing something within our gym or rehab process. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. I'm interested because if everybody sees it, you're just one year in. Well, how long have you been in the new space? Six months? Yeah, six months. Yeah, I think after a while, after people have seen it, you know, one injury or two injuries, and then they're like, all right, fine, I'm going to join because that place looks so cool in the last couple times I've been through. You're not, you need to have about another 12 months of operations. I think around the 18th month, 18 month mark, you start seeing that kind of like, oh yeah, this is, I, I don't want to keep playing ping pong with myself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's and what other, well, go ahead. One of the things that, that um, I wrote down here too, just to, to talk about was, you know, I had had patients that they like to come in on a, on a monthly basis. I'm not someone that pushes maintenance care, but some people just like coming in. Yeah. Ironically, those are some of the people that wanted to train with us. Um, mm -hmm. They just like what we do in general. And they have... You just weren't offering them anything else they could do besides come in once a month. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So those people that, you know, were coming in and, and getting maintenance type care that are training now, honestly, don't even see me in the clinic anymore because they get everything managed through our training. So the way I look at it as, you know, I was collecting $55 a month out of these maintenance patients. And now we're up to two to $300 a month as training clients and they're happier and healthier overall. So it's, it's been cool awesome. to see that as well. Yeah. Can you, you have any success stories of people that actually started training and it changed them, changed their medical condition basically? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got diabetics that have, that have changed. We've had, you know, your chronic musculoskeletal cases, um, that are think one specifically to share with everybody. Cause you know, there's kind of multiple parts here. It's a bes better business model, right? Yeah. It's less work for you. Um, but it's also better care for the patients. Like, like the way we set this up, it's, it's not like you're taking away from one, right? Like a high volume clinic, people say, oh, it's a better business model, but it, the care goes down. Like it sucks, you yeah. know? And it's not less work for the doctor because you have to now see whatever, 300 people a day or whatever the hell they're, they're seeing or, you know, 300 a week. And it's like, dude, that's a lot of physical work and by the way, you, you know, deep down, like you're not doing shit for these people. I mean, they know it, right? These charlatans that are in our profession, like that think that the adjustment is the miracle cure for everything. It's like, dude, like, look at me, either you're too dumb or you're a liar, but one of those things, <laughs> you're either yeah. stupid or you're lying, but there's no way you believe that's really care. Like there's no way, you know, and it's, or it's incredibly narcissistic to think you laying your hands upon this person for 30 seconds every, you know, four days is some miracle cure, like you're Jesus or something. I'm like, shut the F up. Yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. Research. And by the way, anecdotal uh, experience and human freaking nature says that people need to exercise. Like that's how if a deer breaks its leg, they're going to exercise their way out of that, like, or they're going to die, but they're not going to like get manipulated 418 times in six months and call that a solution. Sorry, Dan, I cut you off there, but like, I just, it just drives me nuts. Like our profession has a bunch of these retards that act like they, like they're healthcare providers and they are, they are nothing of the sort. So yeah. everybody that says, I want to start, I want to start, I want to do this. Like you have to actually take that step to get started and start assigning exercise at least, or it's dangerously close to that crap care that everybody else provides. Sorry, I'll hit you now. <laughs> One of the biggest things that, you know, through the, through the sales training that we went through with you that really resonated with me is, is we are doing our patients a dissatisfaction if we are not offering some type of fitness solution for them um, or if we're not selling them on what we have to offer. Um, so that was something kind of eye-opening to us is, you know, you're, you're trying to convince yourself to sell someone on a $4,000 package, but what is the expense of them not doing it? Um, so that was, that was pretty, uh, pretty eye-opening for me and pretty eye-opening for Jordan, our trainer. Um, I think you asked, like, if I had an example of someone that's gone through the program. Um, this is a pretty uh, extreme example, but it's, it's been amazing. So we had this, I had this patient come in maybe a year and a half ago, younger guy, um, was one of the worst, like, fear avoidance, guarding type chronic pain patients I've ever seen, would hardly even bend over to you know, to tie his shoes because he was afraid that he was going to blow his back out. Um, we treated him in the office uh, for, I don't know, a few weeks, um, started getting him introduced to a little bit of functional movement and come to find out he actually um, was a recovering user. Um, he relapsed and had to go into back into rehab. 
lost track of him for about six months, um, got a call from his family and they said, listen, he's back home. We'd love for him to come in and start training with you guys because that is the only thing that he talks about that he looked forward to. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, I'll, I'll send some of these videos to you of, we have some before and after of, of when he first started with us till now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's integrated into our classes. He, um, you know, works out alongside everyone else. He does all the movements. He's deadlifting 225 pounds where he wouldn't even bend over to touch his shoe before. And the biggest part of it is, is he's not using his parents like call crying to us saying that, you know, this changed his life. I know it's dramatic. Like that's not going to happen for everyone, but mm -hmm. man, it's, it's motivating to see things like that happen in your practice. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Nice. Congratulations. So, um, so going into the, the gym piece, well, I guess one thing that I, I haven't done a great job of making clear, but you know, you had your clinic and that was like hundred percent of your revenue stream. Then you started training. So you got a little bit additional rev revenue stream there from the business side. For those people who are like, Hey, listen, I'm, I'm a business person. And that's what I'm interested in this model for. Can you tell like any hard numbers of like improvement or percentage improvement or whatever you want to say, like how much more did you make using this model versus the old model? Yeah. So I don't, I don't mind sharing numbers on it. Um, probably two of the biggest numbers that I can share is number one, the gym is at the moment paying for half of our facility rent. Mm -hmm. um, you got a 5,000 square foot nut. So it's not a, yeah. it's not a little, a little space. It's not a little space. Um, the goal is within the next four to six months that it should be paying for a hundred percent of the rent of the facility. Nice. Um, so being able to take that burden off the practice, uh, it has even half of it has been huge, but being able to take, um, you know, the full rent, not have to cover it with the clinic is going to be huge. Um, last year alone, um, you know, this is nothing earth shattering, but we added, uh, $60,000 in revenue to the overall business by adding the gym. Um, and the goal this year is to, I think we will at least double that, maybe triple that. That's awesome. And, and, and that's again, all money that's coming in and you're not coaching that, right? Like that's. Yeah. I, I coach one class a week. Um, okay. just to kind of still keep a, you know, an eye Your on things. dirty. Yeah. But that's going to come to a close here pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, we've added that number to the, to the practice, uh, to be honest with you, I'd have to go back and try to run some numbers, but I, I would, I'd venture to say like our clinic revenue in general has increased maybe 10 to 15% by the addition of the clinic and what we talked about before, where it just creates a different atmosphere here. People like coming to the office. They like seeing the facility. Um, so in so that 10 to 15% increase in clinic business, how much more or less or the same are you, are you working clinic hours in there like to fulfill on that? Yeah, I've definitely not expanded my clinic hours at all. Like I said, bringing on, you know, a personal trainer to uh, fill the role of a rehab specialist has been huge. It's allowed us again to increase our, our patient volume and not increase my workload. In fact, like, you know, I, I've probably, I've stayed the same as far as the amount of patients I've seen, but in addition to what he sees, it's grown my overall number, probably 60%. Six zero. Six zero. So I, I, again, I don't mind sharing numbers. So before, you know, when I was kind of, you know, in, in the segmented practice, I'd see anywhere between maybe 80 or 90 visits a week, um, working a full schedule. Now with the addition of um, a rehab specialist, personal trainer, where I'm probably up to 140, 150 visits a week. But me personally, I'm still at that like 80 to 90 visits a week and he's seeing the additional ones. So those aren't 60% new patients. It's that you're just maybe a third, the, if we kind of split your care plan into three parts, you're fulfilling on part one and two and he's taking the, the final third. Correct. So on a 12 visit care plan, for example, he's taking visits, what would they be? Eight through 12 or nine through 12, yeah. right? I would and say that's that, allowing you to, go yeah, ahead. I would say before I would average maybe like my patient visit average would be, I'd see people maybe 10 sessions in total. Mm -hmm. And now I may be seeing someone 
eight sessions in total, but we're seeing them for 13 or 14 sessions in total. So our overall patient visit average has grown, but mine individually has shrunk. If that makes sense. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's kind of uh, migrating. You're migrating towards more acute, tougher care, but your length of care is migrating longer because they're getting that active, that they're making that transition to active care as the literature says should happen. Right. Correct. Um, yeah, that they're, but they're actually doing it, not just like, hey, go work out. It's like, no, we're going to watch you work out. That's, yep. that's awesome. Uh, and personally, because I know you're a very driven dude, like personally, um, in the last year compared to say, so what was this? In 2018, well, in the six months you've had the gym, so you open a new gym, it was not without headaches. Like I can remember multiple phone calls with you, like, uh, you know, short, short of, your hair on fire or ready to, to kill somebody, right? Like, yeah. Hey, how do I handle this? Um, so it wasn't without, without headaches, but it also seemed that in the first six months of our relationship, I don't ever remember you going on vacation other than to like home for a holiday. The second six months and the last like four months, you've taken a couple long weekends, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, that's the overall goal for me is to get to the point to where I never want to lose, you know, actual patient interaction within the practice, but you know, I want to spend time with family. I want to travel and. Well, you're starting to do that. So is it, is it the fact that there's money coming in on the days you're gone? Like what's allowed you to do that? Cause I think a lot of people going, Oh, I want to take vacation, but they don't have any clear plan to get there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they're like, Oh, well I have to stick all the way through Friday. Cause I got to see patients and Saturday. I really should come in for a couple hours to get paperwork done. And you know what I mean? Like it just, they never break free and, and they end up coming seven days a week for a whole year, not realizing, dude, I've never taken, like, what's the last time that uh, most of your friends you graduated with actually took all three days of Labor Day weekend off, yeah. Memorial Day weekend off, um, you know, left the office on Wednesday of Thanksgiving and took Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday completely off? Yeah. You know, I, I, I'll take it a step further and say, you know, people take that time off, but how, how are they actually enjoying it? Or are they you know, scared to death when they get back in yeah. on Monday. They're distracted they the whole damn time. Yeah. And that, that was, I mean, that's still me at times. I've gotten better at it. But I mean, thinking back two or three years ago, I mean, that was me to a T where I was, you know, trying to enjoy vacation, but thinking about shit, I'm missing, you know, two days of revenue. How's that going to affect my payroll? Yeah. Um, now knowing that being able to look at our recurrent revenue model that's coming in from the gym and knowing we're at least going to have a certain number coming in automatically. And that number is only going to grow from here on out mm -hmm. um, is extremely motivating. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that knowing that we have that additional revenue source has allowed, to, allowed me to take a little bit more time, focus on other things um, and not stress as much. That's awesome. And so what's the longest uh, stretch you've had so far of like actual time totally off? Like no calls into the clinic, no, uh, no, yeah. I'm, hey, be honest, dude, because a lot of people are like, they've never taken 24 hours off, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm still someone that I, I don't think I'll ever be someone that takes like, you know, 10 days in a row off, but you know, probably six days. That's a huge jump forward for a lot of people. So that's exciting. And uh, if you were to get sick for a week, you know, like, let's say you got you, freaking uh, the bird flu or something. Uh, what, how many revenue streams do you have that are still bringing money into the office? So no, no Dan showing up, but what, what could you still pull off, you think? Um, I still think we could pull off a lot of it because of, number one, um, Jordan being in place. We do have a physical therapist here as well. Um, the fitness side is still going to operate whether I'm here or not. Um, yeah, there's still room that we have to gr have to work on this. I mean, I'd like to get to the point to where, uh, you know, I'm, I'm backing off even more and having those providers in place. Um, so I really don't have to be here. Um, yeah. But we, we would be, we would be in much better position than I would would have been a year ago. Could you have? Is there any way you could have pulled off that idea without the gym? No. Okay. Yeah, that that's my thought. I mean, I've always, you know, like I, I love the clinic gym. Uh, like the hybrid model. Um, but I keep an open mind. If there's another way to do it, like, let me know what it is. I just don't see anything else short of like, you know, those cats that I know that do like crazy ass uh, number of supplement sales a month. I guess they could still do that, you know, but uh, that's certainly not a, a business model that I want to get into. 
like uh yeah i just think that the, the gym is a perfect extension of what you're currently doing so uh yeah so for those listening going oh this is a blatant sales pitch uh you're damn right because dan's doing it right and he did the work and the model has uh has worked for him but uh dan no bullshit do you think you could have done it on your own no. or this fast no d- definitely not this fast i mean i probably would have slowly figured it out and yeah probably burn some bridges along the way, but you know, this, this absolutely fast tracked us into the position that we're at right now. Um, you know, I've never been one to shy away from risk. Um, I was just not happy overall where I was. It wasn't about like, all right, I want to, you know, I want to add more revenue to my, to my practice. It was, I want to come to work every day and enjoy what I do. Mm-hmm. And I was at the point where I was like, all right, all right I don't care what it takes. We're going to do this. Yeah. And, well, you and your wife will like pop in on a Sunday to just get a workout in, right? Like, yeah, I mean, that's, we that's, own the, place. that's like, been the best let's part. Do this. Yeah, we, we love to work out. We love fitness. Uh, you know, now we own a gym and we can do whatever we want. Yeah, it's been awesome. Hey, I just want to take a second here and make sure you know all about clinicgymhybrid.com. There's information over there. You can set up a uh, phone call if you want uh, to ask me some questions, but also, Uh, We also have information about our Accelerator and Accelerator Lite program. So those are both programs that have 42 high-impact video lessons all about how to get up and running in the shortest amount of time. I hope that you are uh, able to take us up on that because that will help get us close to our goal of 100 hybrid facilities in the next year. If you have any questions, feel free to set up some time to talk on the phone. And now we'll get right back to our interview. What was the biggest hurdle along the way that you think that you had to kind of get over? I mean, you had construction delays, you had uh, staff stuff, you had, I'm trying to remember phone calls with you. Um, <laughs> I'd say the big issues. issues. You had a lot of staff issues because you had some staff that were not interested in progress, I would say. Yeah, right? I mean, we, we had to assemble the A-team for sure. And there were some people that were not on board. So that, right. that was challenging. I'd say the biggest overall challenge for me was balancing, still maintaining um, the numbers in the clinic side yeah. At the same time, try and try to build up the systems and the processes in the fitness side. Yeah, um, I did. I that I did not want the the clinic to suffer at the cost of trying to focus on a gym. Um, yeah. which and a lot of our phone calls were no's, basically, right? Hey, yeah. I have this opportunity. I mean, I think any any young uh, Cairo that's doing good care is probably going to have a ton of opportunity come your way, and uh, unfortunately, you have to say no often, more often than you probably want to. And again, just to reiterate from what I said in the beginning, I mean, the biggest advantage that I was not expecting was the effect that this would have on the overall clinic for me. Um, you know, I always say like, we're a clinic first, gym secondary, and maybe at some point that'll switch. Um, but for me, the focus was my clinic and just the effect that it's had on that from a atmosphere standpoint, environment, community, whatever you want to say, um, it's, it has definitely helped us grow our clinic um, while we're growing the, the gym as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, any tips you have for anybody that's looking to go from zero to, to hybrid or there's, they have a clinic going like you did and they want to like take that leap. What was the, before you and I worked together, what was the leap you had to get over to start offering fitness? I had to get the approval from my wife was number one. <laughs> But so if anybody has a wife that may not let them do that, can they call you and be like, Hey, listen, I need some uh, good lines here, buddy, to deliver. And they can call her and get better advice from me. Yeah. Than me probably. Here's um, a good start. When you decide you're going to open a gym, just randomly take home flowers and yeah. don't say anything about it for five days. And then, you know, just start making a couple deposits here and there. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's going to take work. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take some time in the beginning to build it up. Um, but you know, I was just, (laughs) my wife is very blunt and, you know, I was giving excuses on why not to do things. And she's very realistic and just says, you know, if this is something that's going to help the business, you need to do it. Like you need to do this for us. You need to do this for your staff, for your patients. Um, and you know, we just, it finally got to the point to where like, all right, this is now or never. And why not do it? We, and we just crossed off the excuses off, off the sheet and looked at the upside of it. And it was a no brainer. Awesome. 
And what's uh, what? How excited are you about the next few years of practice and, and growth? Yeah, sometimes I have to kind of reel myself back in from from kind of thinking too big. But I mean, it has expanded our awesome. our dreams and our thoughts about how we can grow this even more. Um, and and I, I mean, I'll tell you one of the coolest things that it's been is seeing. So we we have a really good physician network with our clinic. We get a mm-hmm. lot of physician referrals. Uh, we have had multiple physicians that have come in that have saw, seen our facility and been like, oh, man, I've, I was thinking about doing something like this. And these are pain management. These are surgeons. These are yeah. you know, family physicians. They're like, God, I wish I had something like this. Um, so I think we are just on the cutting edge of a trend that's just starting um, and being able to uh, get there first uh, in the community is, I think, is going to put us in a huge advantage. I think at some point we're going to get approached by one of the bigger facility systems to say, all right, how'd you do this? Uh, Because it's going to have such a big impact. We're seeing that more and more. I mean, I've got four clients right now that have all been approached by major doctors groups, like, you know, 30, 30 plus physicians in their area or a hospital or some large uh, organization. That's like, you know, we want to contract with you because this is the wellness model. This is our, they call it a lot of different things, but it's something like that, you know? Yeah. Nice. Well, Dan, any, any last words for our listeners? Uh, the, you know, any motivation or, or, or uh, words of wisdom you have for them as we wrap this up? No, like I said from the beginning, I mean, it's just, if this is something that you, uh, you know, you envision yourself doing, just try to, try to take the excuses off the board and look at the upside, look at what, what value it could bring to your practice and, and start to look at, you know, just take one day of your patients and, and start to go through them and be like, all right, who could I see myself referring this to? And you'll realize very quickly, man, I have a lot of people that would benefit from this program. Yeah. And then just ask yourself, why aren't you doing it? You know, are you doing a disservice to your, to your people by not having this option for them? Right. Um, and then, you know, if anyone wants to chat about our process or, you know, I know we're in Columbus. If anyone wants to come out and mm-hmm. see what we're doing on a day-to-day basis, we'd be more than happy to have them. Okay. Uh, we don't have it perfected, but I think we're doing a good job getting there. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Dan. I appreciate you being with us today. And uh, for those listening, I'll try and include, is it all right if I include your email address in the show notes? Yeah, that's, that, that works. Okay. And then you're also like in the FTCA group and the FTCA gym, gym clinic hybrid. You're uh, on Facebook messenger. You're all those places, right? Yep. We're everywhere. Awesome. All right. Well, on behalf of Dr. Dan Leonard, this is Dr. Josh Satterley saying, go out there, do what Dan did, maximize your license and live the life you dream of. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. Boom. I hope that was impactful. I know I enjoyed that interview a lot. So if you're interested in learning more about the hybrid model, then go over to clinicgymhybrid.com where you can find out more information, including information on our accelerator program, which will lay out the 42 steps to get up and running with a hybrid facility of your own. This is Dr. Josh Sayerly. We'll talk to you later.